From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, it's great to be back with you for another episode, and i um, sure that we have some informative topics to discuss with our audience today. Uh, yeah, we do got a, a good topic today, and as always, enjoy being here with you, Steve. How, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, it's uh, you know really fun to do this podcast and, and for us to uh, connect with our audience, and, and we've been getting more people reaching out. So uh, this is another topic that I hope that people will connect with and that we'll get to hear some more interesting feedback. Um, what we want to talk about today is, is virtual control. Um, it, it's something that has been a, around and existed for quite some time, and it's something that there's been a lot of debate about. So I'm sure that we'll have share a little bit of that today. Uh, but it's also something that we're seeing because of the fact that is it's becoming a way that software is being able to offset the um, the uh, un, the availability the limited availability of some hardware solutions. So um, there's a lot that we can unpack with with virtual control. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about um, the IT side of it, um, James. Um, but when when we talk about virtual control, I guess get, give us a little bit of perspective. Um, what 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 do, what do we mean by that, and and how how does it kind of kind of fit into the the solutions that we commonly see in in the AV industry? So, as ever seen, we got to define what we're talking about so we're all on the same page. So, to me, for virtual control, um. To me, that is taking your processing um, and language. Like, you, so when things happen, the process behind all that stuff, and making it hardware agnostic. So it does not need to live on a Xbox or a Z box. It can go on anything even a virtual environment, which a lot of IT people are rolling out now, especially now into the cloud environment. I mean, it is so easy to spin up a virtual machine and get software up and roll, running on it. Um, there is also downside to that as well. And uh, I, I'm sure we'll talk about a lot of those pros and cons, but to me, that's what I'm talking, when we talk about virtual control, that's what I'm talking about. It's taking our control interfaces, our processes, and instead of having it say, oh, I need box X or box Y to do the processing, it's now open to anything or in IT world, as we call it, open source. I, I think that's a great way to put it. Um, and, and, you know, I can share a little bit of my um, different perspectives on that, or, or the, you know, the definition. Before we do, I just, I just want to remind the audience that we've had some of these conversations before. That if you want to check back to episode sixty-two and sixty-three when we spoke with Patrick Murray, we talked a little bit about this, and and um, that was uh, several episodes ago. And I think that right now we're seeing more of the control manufacturers really embrace this. At first it was something that when it came out or when it was for, when it, when it was, um, when it was brought to market, there was probably a lot of, uh, a lot more of a thought process about, are we hurting ourselves? Is a manufacturer hurting themselves by putting something like this out because manufacturers depend on selling hardware. So are we um, going to see this as being a temporary solution? Is it something that now is being thought of and adopted because of a need to that is that may or may not go, it may or may not be um, uh, sustained? Uh, but uh, you know, I think that there's a lot of different ways to to take this. And as as you mentioned, it, you know, we're talking about things that are hardware agnostic that that could may or may not exist in the cloud, but but they're really more um, IT based solutions, which is what excites me because it it makes what we do I think a lot more um, understandable to 
the the rest of the world. Um, and and um, we've been trying for some time to make that happen. But there's a lot of um, the, the, you could, it could be argued different ways, you know, and 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 I think that it 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 lowers some of the barriers to entry as well from from um, you know if we want to look at it that way. So um, why, why don't you uh, um, kind of take us down that road? What what are some of the the pros and cons or the decision criteria if for for you or for others that are considering adopting this because. It it may not be some it, they may not quite understand right now what uh, what goes into it. Um, I can probably talk way longer than our normal time limit on this. Um, so if you want a little more uh, depth into my take on this, is um, I don't know when it's coming out because not for the higher ed digital magazine. If I do have an article coming out for another publication, and uh, that really talks about a lot of the pros and cons and it's about software to find AB, not virtual control, but same thing as we talked about before, but briefly, like some of the pros is like I mentioned earlier, it's very easy to spin up a VM. In fact, like just the other day at work, we were having, I we're getting ready for our new building to open up and I'm now working on getting the support servers running. So I just, through a request in our system saying, I need a VM. These are the specs I need. This is the software I'm going to put on here. And within, and now that's going through a service provider who's doing the VM for us. They built it for us on stuff. So it was a little slower than I would prefer, um, but it was like a two day process up and running. I didn't have to wait six weeks for a box to come in or as some manufacturers are now a year out. Um, it, you don't have that time frame. It's quicker, um, easier. The problem, I, I think th there's a lot of also cons and that you got to look at is one thing is what concerns me is a lot of this is more going to a license base. So, okay, I install programming Y uh, as my controller. I got to pay that licensing, let's say yearly, it's a yearly license. Not only do I have to make sure I pay that license, I got to make sure I'm on top of that license because that license expires, my control stops. Unlike where we were back with the physical hardware, once you buy it, you buy it, it's done, it's set. You can go 10, 20, 30 years. Um, and hopefully if you can go that long with a piece of hardware, but some AV stuff has gone that long without costing another dime. Uh, so there, that is a concern of mine with the whole virtual control is you're locked in a little more, making sure you are paying the fees. The alvin to that is, like we said, hardware runs 30 years. We don't think about it why it's running until there's a problem. And then it's a big fix to address it. Where software, you have updates coming out. It could be daily, it could be weekly, it could be monthly, and it's new features. Your upgrade process uh, cycle is whenever there's a new piece of software out. I kind of chop it up looking like the hardware side of it. It's like looking at uh, businesses' security cameras. Businesses, when they start building, like they build, they install the latest and greatest security cameras. They're set and forget. And then five, 10, 15 years down the road, something happens, break in, robbery. Everyone's like, but my phone takes a better picture. Yeah, those cameras are 30 years old. No one ever thought about them before. Now there's a problem. Now we got to go fix this and then spend that money. And then again, it's set it and forget it. Um, so that you got pros and cons both ways. Yeah, I, I I think that was really well put, and a lot of things that I um, would uh, there's so many different ways to look at this, and 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 I think that it's it shouldn't be a decision that that is taken lightly. I guess is what what my one of my takeaways, um, and another thing is that there's a lot of responsibility that goes along with it. Um, I think that there's a lot of value that can be gotten. 
Uh, but but as you said, you you need to make sure that you you are um, realizing that a virtual solution is not the same as a hardware solution, and that they need you need you need to have a plan. I guess is probably what what I you know the the main takeaway from it. I, I think either avenue you go down, you have to have a plan. Yeah. Uh, you can't hastily go down either rabbit hole because then you're just setting yourself up for failure you have to know the pros you have to know the cons of both routes and trust me i've looked at virtual control in fact with this whole supply chain issue that we're all facing virtual controls is a godsend right now because if you need control and it's virtual you can get it yeah where hardware you're waiting um, 7 12 13 18 months for. So the question is, do you think that it's going to be a temporary fix or do you think that it's going to be a long time? Uh, do you think that this is going to be a shift in the industry? I think it's going to be a shift. I already, I saw this coming a while ago. I actually wrote about it in a couple months ago, maybe six months ago or something. I read an article where I actually, there's short trends and long trends and software to find AV was a short trend of mine. It's all happening. I think the supply chain issue is speeding it up. And I think one of the main driver behind that, besides the, the supply chain issue is what you hit on in top of the show of it's an IT, like IT lives by virtual <clears throat> that. Yes, they are running services. They know their licenses. This is stuff they know. Oh, you need a VM with Oracle and SQL or this? No problem. I'll, I'll, oh, wait, you want a what kind of box? Like uh, physical box? They don't know that, but they know their VMs. So you're speaking IT language, which I've been saying this from day one, that AB is IT and we got to speak the IT language. So now you have IT folks who are now spinning up these virtual controls and are I don't want to say taking our jobs because that's not what I'm trying to get at. Where AB is not going away, our skill sets are changing our, and are evolving. And if we don't evolve with it, the IT world will leave us in the dust. And we saw it with telephones. The telephones kind of drag the feet. I'm not really tell. Sorry, that's a bad example. Let's say, like, you look at cassette tapes, they're gone. Like, everything is now digital. Like and cassettes tried to fight that for a longest time instead of adopting it, and you lost a lot of studios because of that. So, same thing is, uh, yeah, vinyl is coming back because it's the hip thing. I don't like vinyl. I I think it's silly, but that's my personal taste. But again, we're really is in that IT world now, and your IT administrator who's a running maybe thirty virtual boxes can do it. And he's like, oh yeah, another box, no problem. I'll have that up and running in no day and no time. And now they're taking over a lot of stuff we did because, you know, we're special. You can't do what we're doing. Well, now they are. And a lot of AV people are, I think, scared of it. Yeah. I have a really good point. Re really good point. I, I, I agree with you. And I think maybe we'll, we'll have to have a follow-up episode where we're, we're diving a little bit deeper because there's so many different parts of this to dissect. But the one I wanted to close on here, I think that's really important is to just clarify that when we talk about this, we're still talking about using the same, most people are still talking about using the same tools and languages and, and approach for the most part to programming. So we're still talking about our, our same pro programming a pro um, that we're just still take talking about writing programming in the same languages that we were in the same environments that we were just loading them into something that is a virtual versus physical or dedicated product. So I just wanted to clarify that too. And when we talked to Patrick, we talked also about the fact that this also, this can open the door to using more modern programming languages. So there's, a lot that we can 
go with this in a lot of different directions. And, and I think, you know, what this also brings up that the same security conversation that we tend to have as well. But I just wanted to make sure we clarified that when we're talking, talking about for today's conversation, um, we're talking about the same control manufacturers that we all know, just providing uh, a solution that is not on a dedicated piece of hardware that, that they make. Um, yeah, that's a good clarification. And yeah, I did go on a little rant, so that could have gotten muddy. Great cl clarification there, Steve. So I, I think we're, um, you know, th this is a conversation I'd like to continue and and I think has a lot of value. And and if, if um, your prediction is um, going to be true, uh, which I don't disagree with, we're going to see this being more of a part of our lives. So we have to discuss more what impact that's going to have long-term programmers need to be preparing themselves for it. And we have to kind of shift our mindset a bit because the last thing, as you mentioned before, you don't want to get trapped into thinking about the old ways of doing things and realizing that you missed that need to make the adjustment to be effective in a, a virtual control environment any uh, any further thoughts about that um not really because i think if i continue talking we're going to be another two three hours <laughs> um, so as you can see a lot of rabbit holes we can go down to but um yeah no that's a good point there steve Let, let's flag this one and we're, we're, you'll hear more from us and also if somebody wants to come on to talk about this with us please reach out because we'd love to have some more either subject matter experts that can comment or some um, people who have had either different experiences with it or want to um, uh, debate it a bit because we, we, uh, that's what this is all about. We'd, we'd like to explore it from different angles. So um, James, how can people get in touch with you, uh, learn more what you're doing? As always, uh, Twitter, AV underscore James King. I'm on LinkedIn writer for the digital magazine, uh, AV and IT, or IT and AV column. And anything with HEPMA, again, Google me, you'll find me. And for me, you can reach me at Steve Greenblatt on most social platforms, uh, Twitter and LinkedIn are where I am most active. Uh, I do some writing as well, um, AV Network, uh, Commercial Integrator, and also my company blog at controlconcepts.net. And um, please, uh, continue to uh, reach out to us. Let us know what you like, what you want to hear more about. Uh, we'd love if you could share your favorite episode and one of these platforms and tag us. It really would make our day. And uh, if you don't already um, consume our content, um, we're available in your favorite podcast player through Apple and Google, as well as on YouTube. So with that, this has been Ask the Programmer.